All right, good morning, I'm Ms. Parks with Hunt High School. Today we're talking with Ebony Cease from Chowan University. Hi, Ebony. Good morning. And we, um, we want to talk about Chowan a little bit. Um, I know the kids, some have heard of it. It's one of those schools, some have not. So um, why don't you tell us about Chowan? All right, well, um, Chowan University, we are in Murfreesboro, North Carolina. Um, we're about an hour away from the coast, so we're in uh, northeastern Carolina, and we are a small private college. Um, we are a Christian school, and yeah, I have a PowerPoint to kind of go over all about Chowan and all about college. If awesome. You want to share? <laughs> go ahead and share my screen. There we go. Great. There we go. And we love the colors. As the <laughs> colors. It's so on blue. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we love it too. Okay. So at Chowan, um, our saying is faith in your future. And we say that because every single admissions counselor you come across and once you enroll and you're a student, um, every professor, staff member that you come across has faith in your future. We all want what's best for our students. We all wanna see you succeed. We wanna make sure that you're on the right path for you. So just to start out, why should you go to college? Because college is great. Um, and it's a lot different than high school. So a lot of people don't really want to do more school, but college is a lot different than high school. Um, so the first example, hours of classes per week. In high school, you have about 35 hours classes a week. It's like a full-time job. Uh, you're there every day, all day. Whereas college, you have a lot more flexibility because you're choosing what you want to learn. So you have about 12 to 16 hours in class every week. Um, your first class in high school usually starts at 8 a.m. Everybody's starting together. Start your day, your end your day. It's all on a very strategic schedule. Whereas college, you make your own schedule. So if you're not a morning person, um, you can schedule afternoon classes. If you want to get up and get everything done in the morning so you can nap in the afternoon, we understand that too. So you get to make your own schedule. You have a lot more freedom. The number of classes a week, just like the hours, significantly decrease. In high school, you have seven classes. It's usually pretty monotonous. You do the same thing you're doing every day, whereas college, it's about three to five and you get to pick them. So if you have a subject that you really like, you know that Tuesdays and Thursdays are your days, then again, that flexibility and that um, independence that you get to have in college is really nice. So in high school, again, the structure, there are a lot of rules uh, in high school. Can't eat, drink, chew gum, have your cell phone class, can't have your hood up, can't have a hat on. Whereas in college, usually you're allowed to eat depending on the class, if there's not a ton of electronics and stuff. Um, as long as you are respectful to the professor and mindful, you're not smacking your gum. Uh, you can bring your electronics, try not to use them, but you can obviously have your cell phone in case of emergencies, a laptop to take notes. And you can wear a hat or a coat. There's no real dress code. Um, just come and learn. Now your homework is going to increase because again, you're picking what you want to do. You're picking what you want to learn. So you have to put the time in to study what it is that you're interested in. So high school, you have about 10 to 20 hours of homework a week. Whereas college, you have 20 to 30 hours to kind of supplement the hours that you're not in class. So college is great. Um, you can join a number of clubs, organizations, um, more so than high school. And the one great thing about college, especially Chowan, is that if you come to campus and we don't have a club or organization that you were interested in or you thought about, and it's something that you want to create and kind of take that initiative on, you can meet with our student life team, find an advisor, and start your own club or organization. So, we talked about college and having a lot more independence than high school. Uh, and that's where this responsibility, staying on track slide comes into place. In high school, a lot of your classes are picked for you. Uh, your teachers make sure that you're in class. If you miss so many classes, uh, your phone's gonna be ringing at home. Your parents are going to know. Where in college, you choose your classes. So you, you choose that responsibility to go to class. You make appointments with your advisor. Um, 
you choose to be there on time and your grades are not sent to your parents normally. So it's up, <laughs> it's up to you to stay on top of them. It's up to you to get the grades that you want to see and get the grades that you'd be proud of and you'd be proud to take home. So the bottom line, going to college is more responsibility and it does mean that you have to work harder, but with that responsibility, you get a lot more freedom, get scheduled your classes, get to stay up late if you want to. You have the opportunities to really become an adult um, in your own way. So another great thing about college is the more you learn, the more you earn. Uh, research shows that the more education you receive, the more money you make over a lifetime, which I'm sure a lot of people have been hearing ever since they started school is that the way to make money is more school. Um, so the more education you receive, the better quality of a job you can get. I'm sure if you go on Indeed right now, a lot of jobs uh, at minimum require some type of college degree. So it is more than just a piece of paper. It really is your future. It kind of determines your quality of life, your earning, um, and your happiness, depending on what your passion is. So this is just a quick little chart that we include um, to visually show you the difference of between the level of education that you complete and the amount of money that you can potentially earn. Um, and then also how that correlates with unemployment. So with all of that being said, how do you choose a college location? So you wanna pick a place that you are comfortable, um, a place that's familiar if you're a person that wants to travel and kind of get into a new space, then maybe you wanna go somewhere further from home. That's where that location comes into play. The size. So when you're going to college, it's definitely a complete reset from high school and you are going to be a either a very big fish or in a small pond, or you are going to be a little tiny fish in a big ocean. Um, and it's all about how you fit. Do you thrive in situations where you are kind of playing the background and there are a lot of other people to take that attention off of you? Or do you want that individual class size, that person, uh, personal relationship with your professors and being able to meet with other people in your class, other people in your major and collaborate in a smaller setting? Personality. Does personality of a college usually, the personality of a college usually reflects the staff and students. Uh, so the colleges that you visit should feel comfortable to you. When you walk around campus, you should feel comfortable with the students walking past you, the interactions that you see students have with professors and other professional staff members on campus. And then the facilities. Um, do you have certain needs or interests? Do you like to play basketball in your spare time, but you don't want to be on the basketball team? You wanna make sure that the college that you choose has a gym that's just open for students that aren't athletes. Um, or if you wanna swim, that they have a pool. Um, you know, the student center, does it have video games? Things that meet your interests outside of class, but also if you are have a certain major, make sure that the school that you're choosing has the department for your major and has the, uh, the resources that you need to be successful in that major. And then here we go, major. Um, the courses and the major that you're interested in pursuing, that's really important when you're choosing a college. Not only that they have the major, but they have the classes that, are, that will prepare you for either further education or getting a job outside of, outside of school. costs. So the big thing today is how much college costs. Um, and that's one really big thing when choosing a school. Does it fit your budget? What kind of financial assistance does that school in particular have available to you? And then the extracurricular sports activities. So like I said, um, organizations, you can choose clubs to be in and different activities to participate in. If you want to play a sport for this college, like Division two, you have to make sure that the school has a sport. If you want to just do intramural sports, you want to make sure that those things are offered so you do have things to do outside of class. And then prestige. Most students want to attend a good college, but remember what is good for a friend may not be good for you. How do you do in college is way more important than where you go. So you don't want to just pick the place that all your friends are going or that, you know, a family member went to or your brother or sister want to find a place that fits you because what's good for you is the good college and college visits 
you have to visit the college to learn all of these things, to see all these things, to get that kind of feel for when you go there. Because I mean, that's where you're going to be living for the next four years. So you really wanna make sure that you're comfortable. And the best way to do that, I think, is to have a personal visit with the school. All right, so there are different types of higher education. Liberal Arts College, which have a broad base of courses. Classes tend to be smaller and have that personal attention, which is when we were talking about class size before, that's where these liberal art colleges come into place. You have a much more personalized, intimate setting in your classes. Universities, bigger than a college, and they offer more majors and research opportunities. So again, much bigger class sizes, um, but they do, with those bigger class sizes, have the opportunity to offer different facilities and different majors because of all the different types of people that they have there. And then community or junior colleges, they offer um, like two-year degrees and they prepare you for either immediate entry into the job market or if you want to pursue further education like a bachelor's, you can do that as well after leaving community college. And then we have like tech schools, so they prepare you for a specific career, um, art, music, so health, um, like the auto mechanic type of, the very technical hands-on that are specifically made to streamline you to a career. And so public versus private colleges. Private, public colleges are usually less expensive, um, particularly for in-state residents. They get most of their money from the state or local government, whereas private colleges rely on tuition fees and endowments and other private sources. On the other hand, private colleges are usually smaller and can offer more personalized attention. So when you're thinking about what college is for you, and you're thinking, do you want a big school or a small school, this is kind of a pros and cons list that we put together. Um, and we talked about with the big school pros and cons, um, you do have the opportunity to major in a lot of different things. Um, huge libraries, different housing options, well-funded sports programs, um, a wide range of social activi activities, and then the possibility of having distinguished faculty. So professors that have gone on to be famous or alumni that have gone on to do great things in the world um, might come from a bigger school and they might have that prestige behind them. Um, but a con could be a larger class size if you're not one who thrives in a setting like that. Um, with those larger class sizes, a lot of them can be passed off to a teaching assistant and not taught by a professor. Um, there's little student to teacher interaction again because there's just so many students and the pressure is on the students to be go-getters. So if you're in a bigger class size and you're missing class or you're struggling, it may be harder for the professor to kind of rule you out and try to give you specific help. You would have to definitely take that upon yourself in the bigger class setting to get that attention. Um, there are more rules and procedures related to um, enrolling and designing a course. So the majors and courses at a bigger school are kind of just set. Whereas at a smaller school, if you have a specific interest, your advisors and the department can kind of work with you to tailor the classes that you're taking to the major that you're looking to pursue. Um, and then you like have the potential of getting lost in the crowd. Maybe you want to join an organization or a club and you are a little you know, socially shy it's a lot harder to kind of break those walls when there are just so many people. So let's look at the pros and cons of a smaller college. Um, the pros are the smaller class sizes, the hands-on opportunity, because they're again, less hands. There's more opportunity for people to get some hands-on experience. Individually designed majors, what we talked about with the last um, slide, the big colleges, it, again, it is harder to sit and tailor a major to specific students, whereas with the co smaller colleges, there's more focus on each individual student. There are strong advising systems because they're smaller student sizes. The advisors get to know their students very well, and there's a strong sense of community with that because once you're in your major, you're taking the same classes with the same students, and it narrows down as you get further into your major to where there's about eight of you, and you've known them from you know, bio one on one to, to now. Um, and then you guys all get to know your professors very well. 
the cons with a smaller college are limited housing options. They have fewer majors to choose from, fewer physical resources because they don't have so many people to kind of um, provide these resources for a smaller library and fewer social opportunities. So how do I get in, into college? Wanting to go to college is different than being prepared to go to college. Um, and that's because you get accepted into college primarily based on what you do in the first three years of your high school career. So getting, in college, getting into college is pretty competitive. Um, there are four areas in which a student excel in when getting ready to go to college, which is their GPA, um, ACT or SAT score, which right now, because of the pandemic and everything that's going on, the reason that we're virtual um, is test optional for Chilwan. So if students were scheduled to take their tests in March or April, and for some reason it was delayed because of this virus, we are admitting students based on just their application and GPA. So we are making it test optional to take that burden off of a lot of students who are misplaced right now because of that. Um, extracurricular activities. So at times when we see students that are struggling with their GPA or struggling with their test scores, we take the time to look at their extracurricular activities, their leadership, their community service to kind of supplement some of that. So what you do um, outside of your classes in high school still does count. Um, and then your coursework, you wanna make sure that you've taken all of the things that kind of like give you the foundation for college. So your, your English, your math, your science, um, passing grades and all of those, and just having those um, minimum requirements are necessary. So let's say now you know you wanna go to Chowan. How do you get in? The steps for admission at Chowan are pretty pretty simple. You apply for admission, um, you apply for financial aid, which is doing your FAFSA, and you register your housing and secure your housing by paying the advanced tuition deposit. Um, now, when you complete your application, there is no application fee. Instead, that has been changed to the advanced tuition deposit. So when you choose to enroll, students pay their advanced tuition deposit to secure their housing and their classes and their scholarships. Um, and then this, again, send your SAT or ACT scores if you have them at this moment. If you do not, we are able to admit based on just your GPA and your application. We are pretty good at getting admissions decisions within 72 hours after we get all of the materials. That's one thing that we really pride ourselves on and that's one thing because we are a smaller college, we're able to do pretty, pretty efficiently. Okay, so the FAFSA is pretty important. I'm sure that's been said a lot. That's how schools determine how much you can contribute to going to college and how much help you might need. So starting, oh my gosh, on October 1st, the FAFSA, you can start completing your FAFSA and it's based on a first come first serve basis. So the longer it takes for you to submit and complete your FAFSA, the less likely it is for you to receive that aid. And then to receive scholarships from us, um, complete your application for admission. And based on your GPA and test score right now, just your GPA, students that are admitted are awarded a merit scholarship based on their GPA and then submit your FAFSA. Um, we do have additional opportunities for scholarships here at Chowan. So you can interview for our scholarship day scholarship that is based on your um, extracurricular. So that's where it comes in. You interview and kind of go over your leadership experiences and you as an individual. Um, and then we also have our music department. So even if you don't want to be a music major, but music is something you're passionate about and you're interested in and you're good at, you can audition for a, um, a music scholarship. Athletic scholarships are also given because we are a division two school, but those are at the discretion of the coaches. So we've had all of our scholarship days so far. Um, so we can complete that. And the advanced tuition deposit, again, is how you register for your classes. So that kind of stamps you as I'm coming to Chowan. Um, here's, you know, my down payment basically for my housing, for my classes, for the scholarship I received at scholarship day or my merit scholarship. 
And then SOAR is where you would schedule your classes. That's where you decide your major, you meet with your advisor, um, you go over campus questions if you have any more financial aid issues or registrar issues. That's where you handle all of that with SOAR and to secure your housing. Um, after the deposit and you attend SOAR, you complete your housing preference form. Your housing preference form, I always say, is kind of like a dating app. You kind of go over you as a person. So how, what time do you go to bed? What kind of music do you listen to? Are you messy? Are you clean? Those type of things to see the type of person that you want to live with. So fill it out honestly. So you get the right roommate and you're not paired up with someone who's the complete opposite of you because you didn't want to put that you're, you're messy and you stay up late on your, on your housing preference form. One thing about the advanced tuition deposit is that it secures that housing preference form. So once you pay that and you have your housing preference form, you are on that first come first serve basis and do have that, that preference. Now, all students are required, all freshman students are required to live on campus unless you're a commuter student, but our freshmen are allowed to have cars on campus and there is no fee for parking. You just have to register your vehicle with public safety. So that's really nice for our incoming freshman students. So classes begin here in August. And just some ways I think to be a successful student, not only at Cho One, but in college in general, um, to set goals. So think about your future and your plan. This is really where that relationship with your advisor comes into play. You meet with your advisor to schedule your classes each semester and they're going to go over kind of what your career plan is after college and the classes that you're taking within your major um, to get you there and to make sure that you are on the right track. So even if you wanted to go to law school after leaving Chowan or go to grad school, we want to make sure that the classes you're taking in your bachelor's are going to help you down that path. Um, manage your time well. So we talked about being able to pick your own classes if you're a morning you know, person, you get up and you do your classes, or if you're an evening person, you do your classes in the evening, but either way, it's still up to you to one, go to your classes, but take that time outside of class when you do have that freedom and no one telling you to do your homework, to do your homework, and to study. Develop good learning skills, so be organized, uh, develop good study habits. If there are study groups offered, definitely take advantage of those. Have a positive attitude, because um, Again, with these smaller classes, you have the opportunity to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with your professor. So don't be afraid to ask questions if you're not understanding um, and be positive and just that you will understand. This Once you're a freshman, college is new for everyone. Everyone has to try it. So um, just stay focused and uh, don't get discouraged once you know it does become more challenging than high school. Um, take more challenging courses in high school to prepare you for college and accept the responsibility. So if you miss class or you miss a test or you do poorly on a test, accept that responsibility and study harder um, to make sure that you are making the most out of the opportunity. Okay. So there are some questions listed. Do you have any questions for me? I muted myself so I wouldn't talk on you <laughs> in case you heard crazy noise. Yeah, um, I was I wrote a few questions down um, about Chowan. What is your um, class size? We have a class size ratio of about 16 to 1. And oh, it's usually, one. yeah, and it's usually much smaller. Again, once you get into your major, um, this class is kind of narrowed down. You go from those general education classes that you have to take coming in, so those psych, English, you know, but then once you kind of get into your major, say your biology major, you're going to narrow it down. Those labs are going to be with the same students who are also in that major. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a really, actually, that's a really low number for our university um, in comparison to some of the other ones we've been speaking to. I think like um, community college was like 17, which was pretty low. And so the other universities, I think theirs was like 20, um, 22. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty comparable. Um, how about the culture of, um, Chowan? Like, what's it like? Um, <laughs> not right now, because it's <laughs> untypical time, but typically, um, what's it like on campus? So, it's actually very, I would say, lively. One of the big things about when we always talk about kind of bringing students to Chowan is that you really have to experience 
that um, the campus kind of sells itself outside of the beauty of the campus. Everyone, it starts such a family feel from the moment that you walk into the cafeteria, um, you're greeted by the cafeteria staff. You walk into the student center, you're greeted by the student center staff. Everyone, um, again, want, we have faith in your future. We want you to succeed. We also want you to feel comfortable and at home here. We want you to feel like you're home away from home, that you have a family and people that you can rely on. Yeah. So there's, whenever you're walking by someone on campus, they're going to say hello. Um, the president of our university actually is very hands-on. So you'll see him around campus all the time interacting with students. So. Yeah. Um, do you, I had a friend actually, um, so I know the answer, but are there sororities and fraternities on campus? <laughs> there are, yes. Yeah, we, um, we have a teacher in Wilson County that um, was in a fraternity at Chowan and, okay. and also played football. And so he, um, he's very close to those people and he speaks very highly of um, the campus in comparison to Wilson County and how, you know, growing up here and going to school here and how he went on to Chowan and found that it was very similar um, mm -hmm. here and, um, and close lists, you know, because that's kind of something, some kids want that. Yeah, uh, they, it's very welcoming. Yeah, they want to leave Wilson, that. but they don't want to leave. <laughs> like what, yeah you know the comfort of what they're used to um mm -hmm. so that was really cool um how about your um facilities are y'all doing like a virtual tour or do you have like an online yep so we do we actually just launched our virtual tour we've been working on it for the past couple of weeks and we have an interactive map mm -hmm. on our website so um when you scroll over different parts of the map it will show you photos of the building and then we have a virtual tour where it takes you around campus and inside of our building. Oh neat. Um, well I'd be happy to um, to share that with um, sure. on my web page I have um, some um, uh, I have some um, virtual tours actually. Oh cool. Well I will send you the link absolutely. Um, I'm trying to close the screen share. I think you have to because you're on it. <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, so I um, would love to look at that. There we go. There we go. And I would love to look at that and um, have that available for the kids because I was looking at um, who there was a couple colleges already that I was watching their virtual tour. And I mean, it was super helpful um, for people that may not have or be able to visit because we also, you know, have my juniors and they're, this is like prime yeah um, visit time um visit time and then also coming up in the summer is like when their parents have time to take also and that they're not in school and it won't affect like their days um so we don't know what's holding up in the future right now mm -hmm. but um i know that virtual tour may become really popular <laughs> in the yeah. next um couple months as well um and it gives them something to do while they're at home too um something else cool to look at we're also doing um, personal, like personal visits via FaceTime or whatever kind of video app is preferred by the student. That's cool. We're able to do so yeah. if they want to see a, the inside of a dorm room or something with their admissions counselor, they can do that with us and then still have that call. So if they want to go over their enrollment process or financial aid or anything like that, they can do all of that with us in a face to face meeting. That still is social distancing. Yeah, it is. Um, somebody else mentioned that, um, I think um, only one other school, though. So that's pretty cool that you're starting to do that. Um, but yeah, another school had mentioned like you could call them and they would like take their cell phone and, and like walk to campus and show yep. it to you. And um, I think that just, I mean, I think that really connects even more. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it goes that like little bit extra that I think um, a lot of kids and parents might be looking for at this time. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's convenient. convenient. Well, I'll be happy to, um, if you want to send me that link, I'll be happy to also post it. So it'll be in, in multiple, multiple places. So hopefully <laughs> maybe more people will see it. I don't know. Um, and then another thing I wanted to ask, I wrote it down. Um, how does it work with the CCP classes? Because um, a lot of our kids are taking community college classes while they're in high school. Mm -hmm. So um, we just asked that whatever community college that you're attending while you're in high school, we just need a transcript for them as well. Um, and we, we factor that into the admission process. 
Yeah. And so is it, does it help with scholarship? Cause I was looking at like your, um, your scholarship, like kind of little things that would help it would, I mean, taking, instead of taking like the big question with teachers now is like, um, AP honors versus CCP, which is, um, college. Like, mm -hmm. what are you seeing a trend in like scholarship opportunity? So, our scholarships are based on the grade point average and normally they're ACT or SAT score. So now that we're optionally without <laughs> the ACT or SAT score, it's based on GPA. So um, if they are taking, because usually a AP classes will increase your GPA depending mm -hmm. on, you know, um, the grade that you get. Whereas, so that might, that would likely be more popular just because it factors into that bottom line GPA, but I'm sure that, because I don't have a lot of students submitting with their college classes, but I'm certain that that factors in as well. Yeah, I mean, I know like the AP gives them, um, I forget how many quality points, I think it's like mm -hmm. three, and then I think the honors gives two, um, and then CCP doesn't give any, it just gives like college credit, like they don't have to take as many classes when they arrive at you. Um, yeah. so I just didn't know if it's going to hurt like scholarships. It's just something to think about, you know, like, yeah, I don't think it would definitely wouldn't hurt scholarships. It, it, like you said, it would help in terms of academics. If when they go to make their schedule, they may be able to um, admit some of those general education yeah. classes if they already have that credit. Um, but when it comes to scholarship, like increasing, like, that definitely would be the AP honors classes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was, I'm starting to like look into the future. It just started, um, I mean, we've had it, but it just started getting really, really big at Wilson in the last mm -hmm. year, because we got rid of, um, what was it called, uh, Capstone? Oh, yeah. And so um, we switched over to CCP, and we're seeing, um, it's, it's beneficial more to the kids that aren't necessarily um, AP kids, you know, yeah. like you've got this middle ground of kids that could take honors and probably get really good grades, but then also, um, they could probably take college classes and also do really well, so it's mm -hmm. kind of like a, um, it's, it's a battle right now, we're trying to figure out some, trying to get some input to the kids, because they're, you know, registering for classes and trying to figure out what's the best route to get to college and save money, um, yeah. So I guess, I mean, in the long term, if they could still go on to Cho on, you offer master's programs, don't you? Yes. So we um, currently have our master's in early education program. So, so I mean, that's also, um, if they're interested in that, you know, mm -hmm. they can go for a couple years and finish their bachelor's at Cho on and then go on um, to a master's as yeah. well, especially because you said it's a small campus. Mm -hmm. And it's private. What is the um, what does the tuition look like for private? So our sticker price, we always say, is thirty eight thousand. Um, but no student ever pays that price in full because, again, once you're admitted, you do get that merit scholarship, which can be anywhere from four thousand dollars a year to nine thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Um, depending on Me. where you range in that scale. It's usually um, like um, what is it first? Um, generation that's usually a pretty big one mm -hmm. so so yeah um, that cost goes down and then again based on your EFC we do have scholarships through the university um, our scholarship day opportunities where students can interview for up to six thousand dollars in more scholarships um, the music department scholarships so even again if you're not a music major you can still qualify for that if you played an instrument in high school and we're good at it or sang in high school and we're good at it um, and then there's sports we are a division two school so um, a lot of our teams do offer scholarships. Yeah, yeah, that's cool though. I mean, I know, um, was the other one, Westland is also private, and mm -hmm. so they're, you know, doing the same thing with the merit and um, stuff, so that's pretty cool. Y'all are, y'all are competing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, trying to break down the price. <laughs> trying to balance the price. I mean, it's kind of, um, it's kind of, it's kind of weird because I know parents will see the sticker price and their eyeballs will go, oh my gosh. And, but then you realize like, um, if they do qualify, if you can, if you, if you can get these things, then it really does end up going right back down to just as much mm -hmm. as if they went to ECU, you know, yeah. or and I mean, and it's an investment in your 
in your future. Yeah. So I know one thing I found when I when I started working here and I got here that I thought was really cool is that we have what's called the Hawk Flight Program. And that is a $295 a semester for all the books that you're going to need for your classes. All wrapped up into that one price to the bookstore. You rent them for the semester, you take them back. Um, and you can do that every semester. Whereas when I was in school, you would pay $100 for just one book that you could not sell back. You had forever and they would give you a dollar for it. So yeah. instead of paying like $200 for an access code or a book, yeah. you get all of that in that one two ninety five price. Yeah, some schools are doing um, like um, books are included and they're just, yeah. but they're just taking that number and they're tagging it on. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not two ninety five. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a lot more but they're tagging it on to the end number and so it's kind of tricking you in the beginning mm -hmm. it's not included um and so you have to pay attention it's really important uh, and i'm glad you mentioned it because mm -hmm. um i think the more upfront colleges are about like this is what it's going to be the more parents are like thank you yeah that's one thing that we really pride ourselves on is just having all those prices up front so we don't nitpick for all these little fees once you get here like parking yeah. and you know things like that oh, yeah. so parking in east carolina i mean i love east carolina but the parking each year was a fortune and yeah. i could never get to class like i had to ride the shuttle <laughs> so i really didn't understand what i was paying the park for uh, <laughs> so, and um yeah like you say when i actually transferred to fayetteville state and um they had a book program um where you got your books for free and oh. so yeah that was Oh, so thankful for that. Um, yeah, <laughs> I had to give them back at the end of the year, which is fine. I didn't care, but because you're not going to use them. <laughs> I know. I had this. Um, what was it? Physi um, anatomy and physiology book that was like a three hundred dollar book. It was like this big, and mm -hmm. I just, oh, like if I would have had to pay for that book, I I think I would have been broke. Um, but I have like used, three chapters out of it. <laughs> uh, I used it and was like, take it back. <laughs> yep. But it was really cool because I was, I was like you when I went to East Carolina, I paid a fortune, um, uh, for books at the bookstore. And then this little thing at the end of the semester would come by and they'd be like, sell your books back, get money. Yep. You're like, yay. And then you go up there with this like $200 book and they're like $5. Yep. And you're like, wow. <laughs> and it's soul crushing because you're like, I just want to pack up and get off campus. I know, I just Fine, like, give me two dollars. Yeah, like I'll okay, thanks. That got me like a tank of gas. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is pretty cool um that you offer that. Um, I really do like it. And so I I definitely want to do the um look up the virtual tour. Yeah. And see more about Chowan. I've I've actually talked to um your girls basketball coach. Oh, okay. An assistant. Um, I, I coach and I ran into them at a clinic and they were extremely nice ladies. Um, yeah. Actually, we laughed a lot and had a lot of good talks. Um, they seem really down to earth. And so I was really excited when you signed on because I was like, yay, Taiwan. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's a family. It really is. Yeah. It's I mean, good. we're from Maryland. So my, well, my family, I'm from Maryland. My husband's from West Virginia. We moved here in August. And I mean, He'll tell you that it was the culture, it was the community that really sold us. Good. Well, then we have to, you know, figure out how to get our kids there. I don't know. Um, socially quarantined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need to um, set more stuff up um, with that because our kids do need that. You know, they're used to it, like I said, in Wilson. And um, I think they do see like the big flashy schools of, um, and there's nothing wrong with them. They are perfect for some people. Mm -hmm. um, but also there's a lot of people that think that's what they want and then get there and realize it's overwhelming. Yes. And then they end up coming back home. Um, so there's that middle ground too. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you said your turnaround was what, like two, two, three days, three days turnaround? Yeah, once all the documents turn, we're really, really good about getting that done really fast. Yeah, I mean, so we don't really know the future. Of, um, I was talking to somebody yesterday about um, college, you know, next year for these students that have been off for a couple months. I mean, we're looking on two or three months and then they're going to go into summer. So they would have been out of school for five months mm -hmm. um, and not just out of school, but they're at home um on some sort of schedule i hope but maybe not 
And yeah. What is what is college going to look like to those freshmen? I mean, I know they come in wide eyed and like, yay, college, woo, you know. And that was like just having two months off. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm kind of like worried about like, are they just going to go crazy? And it's yeah. too much. Um, I think this, this is like your time as a small school to really pitch that like home, small community. Like we will be here to assist and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like we understand that this is all new. And that's like one of the big things, especially with first generation students, we want to like help them like empathize like we know that this is kind of it can be an overwhelming process and we just want to make it as streamlined as easy as possible yeah do you oh that that reminds me like so it's coming in as a freshman are they they going to have an assigned advisor like in their area or is it just like a general ed advisor like how does the advisors work that's a good question so with soar our um, student orientation and um, advising registration that's when the students meet with their advisor um, decide on their major and they go from there so we have academic advisors who work with the students and our freshmen students. in their field or is it just fresh like their freshman teachers you know? it is in their field if they have if they have a major if they have a field okay that's yeah. good because i I won't say which college I was at, but <laughs> um, I got put with like a history teacher and um, did not major in anything related to history. And it was really hard to connect with him, mm -hmm. like telling him what I was going through. And, and like, I don't know, it was it was tough and I actually tried to get a new advisor um, in a different in my field, which mm -hmm. at the time was in exercise and sports science. And so not to like pinpoint people, but like history people are very, um, you know, detail storytellers. Mm -hmm. um, he was very eccentric and stuff. And so um, he did not know how to clean or organize anything. <laughs> His office was like of stuff. Yeah. And then um, your exercise people, like we were more like scheduled and like, I don't know, more hands-on and we enjoyed the personal connection and stuff and like I don't know it was just a more to me more comfortable environment so like changing advisors like really 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 made me feel more at home yeah and so some colleges have different programs I remember you said SOAR so that's mm -hmm. that's really cool it's like specialized just for um, freshmen yeah yeah, and then like as they get their major, they can start like narrowing mm -hmm. in on that. And you know, probably with a professor since it's such a small campus that they may connect with. Oh yeah. Oh, and they I mean one of our um a lot of the admissions counselors here are alumni. One of them is a, a history major who graduated from Chowan, who like on his lunch break will go see other <laughs> go see the history department. And talk to they just love listening to that stuff. Yeah, no, and I mean it's just like the connections that you build here they definitely last. I mean people yeah. will see their professors on campus and and wave to them, hug them, and they're grown adults who graduated now. So. And what do you um, offer as far as like your internships? Do you have like some good connections there? Yeah, so they're um, within the departments. Um, if you go into like the different buildings, one of the great things that hopefully we see during the virtual tour, um, but also if students schedule an individual tour with their counselor, um, there are bulletin boards in each of the academic halls. So they show kind of our alumni and what they're doing from that major or that department, um, club opportunities, study opportunities, internship opportunities. And we have an open door policy with like all of our department heads. So you're able to, you know, if you walk by and their door is open, just, hey, can, I was looking at the sign, you know, could you tell me more about this? Yeah, so that's good. So there's like uh, lots of opportunity on campus yeah. for that. I mean, I know yeah, each department has their own way of advertising them and yeah. kind of obtaining those opportunities. How about your, um, so do you have any kind of study abroad? I know a lot of people are mentioning that. Yes, we do have a little, not now. <laughs> uh, we do have a study abroad program that uh, obviously is paused for right now, but we also have um, mission trips because we are a Christian college. So we've had trips, um, I can't remember where they were going to go this year, but we do take study abroad trips. And the great thing about our study abroad is that we fundraise for our study abroad and our mission trips. So 
students pay maybe three to four hundred dollars for the entire trip, which includes their um, lodging and food and you know plane tickets, travel, and everything. Which I mean, right now, moving into the future, could be very cheap. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <Not> right now, <laughs> maybe for like November. <laughs> So it's a great opportunity. They get to go with the president of the university, the provost, the students that are selected to go. So it's a great opportunity not only to network with um, faculty and staff on campus, but to have this experience yeah. with faculty and staff. Yeah, I um, always wish that I did that and I just don't did not pay any attention <laughs> to study abroad <laughs> when I was in school. And then I got older and was like, man, why did I? Yeah. You know, my senior year, I was like, oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Well, I see it all the time now, like all my kids that graduate and we, you know, keep up with them and they're going here and they're going there. And I'm just like, oh man, like where was this opportunity? I'm sure they were there. I just mm -hmm. was so busy, like tunnel vision, you know, class. Yeah. I got to go to class. I got to graduate. Yeah. yeah. And work. I had to work. Um, yep. that's another question. Do you have like work programs? Yep. We have um, work study programs. And depending on your major and your interest, so if you are an athlete, a lot of times the athletes will work like the ticket booths at the games, um, concession stands, things like that. Um, we have a lot of soccer players that work in our admissions office. So they, they're student tour guides. They help with our mailing and getting all of that kind of stuff out. They're really helpful. So yes, yeah, students are employed on campus. There are tons of work study opportunities between the cafeteria, the Hawk's Nest, which is our student center, um, the bookstore, our building here in admissions. There are plenty of opportunities for students. And yeah. we <laughs> Good. I mean, that's important to know. And, um, and it helps the kids with their costs, right? Mm -hmm. And put it onto their tuition. Um, do you have tutoring or like a tutoring lab? Yes. So we have um, our writing center. So that is staffed with students that are like the top of their class and their majors. And if you have issues, so during the day, it's a writing center. If you need help with your paper, even just drafting it, planning it, um, citations, all that kind of stuff, they will help you. And then at night, it becomes a tutoring center for all different types of subjects. So if you need help with math, there is a math major who is at the top of his class in there, biology, um, any subject and if for some reason you go in that night and they don't have it you can schedule um, to have a tutor that night that oh that's cool so is it 24 hours or is it like till 10 or something it's about till 10 yeah till 10 yeah that's typical sometimes they have like a 24 hour like um uh lab or something mm -hmm. sometimes, but it's kind of tough to monitor so you have to yeah yeah absolutely how about your security on campus is that um on campus or off campus so we do have um public safety and security on campus that patrol one of the really cool things i noticed here and i wish i had at my school when i was going to college is that um say you're at a class and it's seven o'clock and you're getting out and it's late and it's dark um you can call and you don't feel safe you can call public safety and they will transfer you if of course they can feasible back to your your residence hall that's good yeah that's yeah good. and you don't have to push the blue button <laughs> nope no, you don't have to let you just you call every um, freshman student once they get into their residence hall gets the public safety number. Um, public safety does have a booth outside of our uh, first year freshman female residence hall. So, oh wow, mm -hmm. so that's where it's housed, like right there with them. Yeah, there, you know, there's a public safety building off campus, but there is a booth on campus okay, for like the night watch for them. Yeah, yeah, awesome. That's yeah. Really great. Good to know. Yeah, and I think that's all I had. Awesome. <laughs> it's it's pretty standard. I mean, you know, questions I hear from kids and stuff. And um, you have, will you send me a link to that has like your majors? I know you said um, music was pretty big there. What else are you pretty popular for? I mean, what's your? What's um, I would say our like graphic communications like, department is really because it's very hands on. So our graphics department is they actually make all of our mailings, like a lot of things that we use for the school, flyers, mailings, folders. Um, they're all made in our graphics department with our students. So our students are getting that hands on, they get to work with the software and the machines that would they would be using in their field. So there is um, a 100% job placement rate for those majors, along with our early education majors. Yeah. Yeah, well, you say the master, so I assume that was a big one, but <laughs> yeah. there's always a couple, you know, you never know what schools um, get big in 
I mean, it, mm-hmm. sometimes I feel like it changes, but that's good to know. Is there any kind of, um, you said you're private and Christian based, right? Yes. Is there any kind of like religion requirement, like a religion 101 or something? There is a, um, a like history of religion class that all students are required to take, but it's not like specific to a certain religion. It's just kind of the oh. overall. Yep, yeah, so. that's cool. I mean, I've, we've talked to Methodists before and they have something similar and mm-hmm. we have a, chap- um, a chapel on campus. Yeah, we also have a meditation room in our library that's not specifically meant for any type of like spiritual religious meeting. It's just if a student is studying in the library and they need a place to meditate, take some space, breathe, it's open to everyone. I mean, it's a beautiful room. It's recently added, but it is just a nice space for if you are religious and you want to go in there and pray with others, you can do so. But if you just would like to go and sit and have a moment of peace for yourself, you can do that as well. And you have, well, not now, but typically you have like a service every week. Yes. And we have um, chaplains in each residence hall for our students. Wow. Yeah. Okay. They're staffed in the residence hall. So if students, you know, again, need that, that spiritual guidance while they're in their, their home, which is their residence hall, they have that available to them. That's amazing. Yeah. No, uh, I, really, I really enjoyed, the, again, that part. It's all very big and very family oriented. Yeah, that's really cool to know. I don't think a lot of people would know that. And I think a lot of parents um, might appreciate that. (laughs) So thank you so much. Um, Some great stuff. And I will sign off at this time unless you have anything else. No, I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Oh, yeah, no problem. And I I really do hope to see you again, hopefully next year um, in person. (laughs) Yes, I look forward to meeting you. Oh, well, thank you so much, Ebony. Thank you. Have a good one. You too.